All right. Okay. Fantastic. Amazing. Oh, we're doing fine. Okay. We're, yeah, we're doing fine. No pressure at all. <laughs> so uh, there, right now you've got about 549 people online that are anxious to hear uh, okay. what this group has to say. So let me just say, um, welcome to the DX Forum panelists. And thank you, Wayne, for heading this group up. Um, Wayne, from an early early start in his career as a ham radio operator, was always anxious to make sure that he was in the log and DX was his passion. And this is a photo of Wayne earlier and a little younger, where he was constantly monitoring the pileups and always could swear that he could hear his call sign. So we know we know how passionate you are about getting it in the log, and uh, we also know how much uh, you care about uh, the world of DX and all the work that you've done at the ARRL. But today we're gonna give you the stage and you can uh, lead the team in a discussion. We're gonna monitor some of the Q&A for you and ask you some questions afterward. So I'm gonna stop sharing the screen and right now the panel is live. Okay. Um, so you just go for it. All right, um, so this, this is the, uh... 2021 IDXC DX Forum. We have um, Bart Yonke, W9JJ from ARRL. He's the radio sport and field services manager. We have Ned Stearns, AA7A, ARRL vice director in the Southwestern division and uh, uh, supreme technologist. <laughs> Rusty, W6OAT, uh, Yasme Foundation director and long time, uh, long time DXer. Al Toothaker, N6TA, an active Bay Area DXer from uh, the beautiful, or once beautiful Santa Cruz Mountains. And me, N7NG in uh, new, uh, a new Montana resident, fully retired. Although I did uh, work at the league for seven years in uh, Bart's position. So I had some uh, background in that area. So. Um, we have, we have uh, compiled a, a kind of a, an interesting list of things, uh, com uh, I should say, uh, issues which people have raised. We've raised some, and we're gonna, I'm going to start out by listing a few of those, and then we'll, uh, we'll carry on. Uh, the first one, actually, which has been around for a long time, is should the ARRL delete entities that have been active for a long time? Um, uh, we have a couple of, I have a couple of questions and we have a couple of questions on remote control operation, which is becoming more and more and more of an issue. Um, and, um, oh, there was a few, uh, a few people who, um, uh, more than a few, I guess, who uh, want, are wanting to allow um, five bands, any five bands to qualify for the basic five band DXCC award which has been around for quite a while, but it's still there. So um, uh, let's, let's start, start maybe Bart, could you uh, comment on, uh, on uh, any discussion that's taken place? And I don't know if this discussion has taken place within the league, within the DXAC, uh, the board, uh, before the meetings, whatever, but uh, would you like to comment on that, Bart, W9JJ? Sure, thanks Wayne and, and greetings to the panelists and all of the attendees. It's great to be able to do this virtually. I'm sorry that we all missed out last year. Um, it's, it's really a short answer and the short answer is that the conditions for which countries were added to the list um, doesn't uh, necessitate them simply being removed from the list because they haven't been active or activated. Uh, you know, it's one of those where, you know, I missed several opportunities, uh, either because uh, it was before I was first licensed or because I wasn't active at the appropriate times. Um, so, uh, you know, our top 10 lists of, of most uh, desired countries, um, you know, granted would change if, if certain countries were removed. But the bottom line is the conditions for which they were added to the list haven't uh, haven't changed under the criteria that they began or became onto the list. Um, and uh, while I think the question 
uh, probably happens more often than, than we know. Uh, it, there's, there's no formal discussion on, on removing anything uh, at this point. Uh, I, we are in a, in a condition of uh, the, the grounds for which something made it to the list or its history uh, hasn't necessitated or, or become cause for it to be removed. So what we see is what we have for the moment. Any other comments on that? Yeah, I would like to make a comment. And, you know, uh, things that haven't been on the air for a long time, I mean, th this has been around for several decades of discussion. You remember at one time, for instance, China was just not on the air. There were no BY stations to work and people were urging that we remove China. Again, over time, the politics change, and now you've got Chinese stations everywhere. You know, Indonesia and Thailand used to be on the ban list. Nobody could work them, but here they are back. Yeah, um, I think if you just essentially take off everything that is really difficult or hard to work or even impossible over a two or three year time span, you know, you're just making, you're, you're taking away a lot of what has been the historical challenge of getting up in the high ranks uh, toward the honor roll of DXCC. So would you say that it, in effect that it, it damages the value of DXCC? Yeah, Wayne, I'm sorry, I did not understand what you said. I said, uh, so this means that uh, you're, you're, what you're saying is that, the, I guess, is that this would in effect devalue uh, the, the DXCC award. I think it would, yes, that's my personal opinion. I would not want to see us start deleting countries just because they hadn't been on the air for X number of years. I think Bart had it right. Any other comments on that? Well, or having, on? Yeah, having lived through uh, uh, being on a de-expedition to Kingman Reef that went from an active country to, and I think it's just deleted, it's not expunged. Is that correct? Somebody help me here. Um, uh, the expunged word scared scared me uh, when it, when that was a an option for countries that were not to be on the list. That almost took everything you did and threw it away, uh, either in working it or putting it on the air. I think deleting it is is a kinder way to manage the active list. Uh, that way, it still counts for the grand totals and all the other stuff. It just doesn't count for the uh, current active uh, honor roll and and uh, the challenge in some of the other awards, but uh, but it it's it's a it's a it's a it's a big thing deal to remove it from the list because it's a you know you're tinkering with a lot of people's lifetime work, both as a DXer and as a as a de expeditioner. So it uh, it's not to be done lightly. Other comments? Just to add on history, uh, March 29th, uh, 2016, it was deemed part of Palmyra, Palmyra and Jarvis. So the proximity of the islands and common administration by fish and wildlife. So uh, its basis for change was on the official political side. It wasn't simply because of access. Right. Even or, when we were there, or popularity for that matter. Even when we were there, we knew there was a move to, to change the, uh, the ownership of the island. We knew that you know, when we were running the expedition back in 2000. And uh, we were hoping that it would stay on the list for a while at least so we'd be remembered yeah and if you recall the original reason was yeah you know, sort of it's a separate administration thing because kingman reef was under the department of the navy that's correct. Back, yeah actually i was there in the first d expedition kp6kr you know, in the 70s you know, and there was, it was distinctly different way it was administered from Palomar, even though they're physically very close. Right. Yeah, I think- Back to the question about, uh, if I can make a comment about whether yes. things completely just because they're inactive, uh, I personally gain a great satisfaction uh, after working something that I've waited many, many years, if not decades to operate on, uh, to work. And just because it's hard doesn't mean it should go away. I've been active for 51 years and I still, I'm not at the top of the honor roll. Um, and if you delete the one that, uh, that I need, uh, yes, I'll be at the top of the honor roll, but it's gonna make me feel a little less proud than it would if I had been able to work all of them uh, the way it's traditionally been worked. So 
I'm not, uh, I'm not in favor of making a change at this point. I hadn't heard, I hadn't heard the word expunged. I did hear some about this and I, I think, uh, um, I heard, uh, I heard, uh, deleted, but not expunged. And, and I, I, uh, I agree. I think, I think maybe in some of these cases, um, we need to look a little harder at the, the reason some of them were added and, uh, and uh, maybe a little less uh, applying new versions of the rules to uh, decide whether they go or not. Any other comments on that one? Nothing heard. Um, it, 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 it's a tricky, I mean, you know, we've talked about this topic for, you know, years and years and years. Um, and I think we had a, a different path with Kosovo. I think Kosovo represents a, uh, kind of a refreshing idea, um, you know, that we, we can look at things because uh, uh, because I think adding new countries is, is important. I know IOTA goes through adding islands of, by law, apparently, um, every so often and in order to keep, uh, you know, interest in the game. And I think, you know, we, we got to be careful that we don't make this uh, an activity that, that just a few of us that have been in the game for 50 some years um, uh, have uh, derived pleasure from. I know there's lots of other award systems where, you know, like the CQ Marathon, where every year you start with a fresh sheet of paper and you're only going to work what's active, what's currently on the air. Uh, and that's one way to play the game of DXing. Um, uh, but DXCC uh, and the chasing honor roll or top of the honor roll is a lifetime uh, activity. And, and, uh, and, and I think, you know, I mean, I got the top of the honor roll, I don't know, about 10 years ago. And I have found other things to do. I mean, I'm now on the DXCC challenge and I've got the 3000 and, and I've decided that I need to keep going. So I'm, I'm chasing some guys that are further up the list uh, on, the on the challenge award. So that's what, that's what keeps me moving. Uh, and uh, adding a new country is great. If uh, they're inactive and then new countries added, I'm gonna get five or six on them real quick. So, yeah, one, one, of, one of the things I do when, when this issue comes up is I say, what would Maxwell say? And uh, in, th in this particular case, um, it's a new country. And uh, I think the reasons of, for the opposition were uh, uh, multi-dimensional political or munchy, mo <laughs> uh, because, because um, uh, it was a new country. And, and I, I, think, I think the country criteria is pretty clear Bart, how do you how do you see the country criteria? Do you see it as, as being clear and, and effective? Uh, the current standards, yes. I mean, you know, they've they've stood the test of time. I, I don't really there's no other words to use. Well, we have we have some additions. We have uh, um, a couple of changes that have been made since since the uh, the XE two thousand. Uh, uh, rules were put into effect, but but um, I, I, I tend to agree, definitely tend to agree with Ned that that uh, new countries. Uh, I would lean probably toward uh, a new a new status for a country as long as it isn't ridiculous, you know, and as long as uh, uh, as it's uh, it kind of resembles a country. Maybe more than that. That's not that's not quite right, but but. Uh, uh, certainly Kosovo, certainly Kosovo ex exists to most of the world as a country. Uh, the fact, and we, I did a lot of work on this and I spent a lot of time with our president and uh, we, we talked about issues uh, and, and considerations such as sovereignty and tried to define sovereignty. That's not so easy. Um, but the, the, real, the real bottom line with Kosovo is it's a political issue in, in the area and uh, uh, there were people taking each side, I think. So uh, that was sort of unfortunate. But but in it's, I, I think in, according to DXCC rules, uh, it qualified for a country uh, from a lot earlier than it was actually added. Any other comments? Okay. Um, any other uh, just general um, countries list questions that uh, has come up. John? I don't hear him. Oh, uh, well, uh, oh, yeah, there's, got a, there's, 
I've got it here. You got it? Okay. What, yeah. What is the thinking about the DXCC status of uh, tiny islands in the South China Sea uh, that have been enlarged and are being claimed as PRC sovereign territory? There's several questions like that. Any input? I don't, I don't know that, um, are, is the word natural anywhere in the uh, island, in the part three? <laughs> That's that's an interesting question, and and it's only a matter of size. Um, I guess we might <laughs> think about it and have to wait until somebody goes there. All right. Um, do you think that the CWDXCC start date will ever be changed to reflect the start date of all the other DXCCs, November fifteenth, nineteen forty-five? Or will it have to wait until after certain personnel at the ARRL uh, change? <laughs> I don't think it's actually personnel at the ARRL. I think it's someone much closer to me <laughs> that that affects, and uh, I'll let it go with that. But but um, uh, I think I think really that should be changed, and that should be brought up as an issue. Uh, at, at the DXAC at least, and they can think about that. Maybe those, those folks are all young enough to uh, uh, not look back too far and worry about their own records. For us uh, newcomers, uh, can you elaborate on the reason for why they're not at the same date? <laughs> well, the, the, it, it, was, it was originally, um, uh, let's see, what are we talking about? We're talking about CWDXCC. I don't know, that was, was that, it was, it was the start date of the award and, and uh, it didn't eventually go back. I believe that's true. It didn't go eventually go back to, um, to uh, where all the rest of the countries are, or uh, in terms of CW. And uh, I don't really, I haven't really chased the CWDXCC, so I don't really know. Uh, the reason for it, but but I think it's probably well past time that uh, it be brought up to date. There, there are there are several people, maybe maybe less than several people, who are on the honor, on the CW honor roll because of that rule. Old timers. Speaking of old timers, um, Scott Wright, K zero blank delta has this question for you. <laughs> All of you guys are over 70 and have been hams for 50 years plus, almost everybody. Uh, have you ever considered how your perspective impacts newer licensees who are considering being the Xers and realize that they cannot get to the top of the honor roll since at least two of them prohibit activity? The question is about oh, the, yeah, perspective, about you know, the, the younger generation working toward the DXCC and above. John, I think in a way you're re-asking the question that we talked about a minute ago. You know, you've got the active group, there, there are 340 of them. You know, there are a couple that are inactive right now, so say Turkmenistan is an example. Yeah, you know, those can come back on the air. I mean, we've seen it over the years. You know, so I, I guess I, I still stick with the position that I had a while ago. You know, the fact that something is not available at this moment in time uh, does not mean you shouldn't be, you know, taking it or you shouldn't be taking it off the list. There have been lots of countries over the course of our hamming careers that were not available over certain time periods, but eventually they came back on and some of them are the most plentiful countries now. Yeah, North Korea is the new China, perhaps. We yeah. don't know. Uh, it's, it's, it, it's, um, it's a little, probably a little early to say uh, that we should get rid of those countries. Uh, I, I waited for, uh, uh, I don't know, 25 years to, to make the, the uh, top of the honor, well, actually, yeah, to the top of the honor roll. And that, that was an, an almost that much to, to make the honor roll. Uh, because of these countries that, that were uh, not active. And, and at some point, of course, politics and, and uh, governments change and uh, um, things change. 
it, it's just, it's just, you know, we waited a long time for China. That's another one, uh, a long time. And from 1949 until what, 1982, something like that. And uh, it, depending on your timing, when you started DXing, you could have, you could have been uh, uh, passed on before China ever got on and never worked it. Um, there are some, there are some, I have had some considerations of, of, um, redefining certain things to make uh, things make more sense. But I don't think I would, uh, personally, I don't think I agree with, uh, with uh, uh, taking things off the list because they haven't been on for a quote unquote long time. We have two questions here related to uh, islands uh, going under, being submerged. <laughs> can, uh, can, can Kiesier says, would Scarborough Reef be deleted if it were complete? If it were completely, um, she suggested some, this one thing about that Dr. King uh, is also. I'm not it's, sure. Who, I'm it's not sure. like cities. Please, it, mute, it, please mute your microphone. I'm not sure who that is. Uh, but I'm just, I'm not there. Can't tell who that is. N6OI? I don't uh, know. Yeah. No, it's yeah. Frank. Okay, I got him muted. So would Scarborough Reef be deleted if it were completely submerged at high, or at high tide? And who would determine that it became a submerged entity? Related question, looking at the other end of things, with sea levels on the rise, there are some island nations that will one day be underwater. I would rather see these declared a del as deleted rather than expunged. These uh, protect, that protects those of us who were fortunate enough to make the contact with them in the past. Well, that's sort of self-serving. <laughs> uh, but having, having been to Scarborough Reef, let me comment on that briefly. First of all, uh, Scarborough Reef, uh, as I saw it, uh, is, is something like uh, 35 miles around the perimeter, something like that. And uh, there are lots of rocks there. And uh, uh, I don't see, um, I don't see uh, any, well, we saw, we didn't see any uh, evidence, well, that is, that's not right either. Uh, I was going to say we didn't see any evidence of, of uh, uh, sea level rise, but, but uh, we're, we're talking about uh, four to six feet, something like that, which is not much, granted, um, but, but um, uh, I think that, I think that, um, um, Scarborough Reef is not about to go away uh, because of um, because of sea level rise for for a long time. And uh, Queen, maybe, yeah, Queen, was there uh, when you were in that region um, and you chose where to operate? Were there other um, landforms, uh, rocks, whatever that yeah. stood higher than where you were? Um, not much higher. But, but I have to say at low, really low tide, spring tide, something like that, uh, a lot more uh, dry ground would show up because, because you can walk off of, a, off of those rocks that you saw in the photographs, you can walk just about anywhere. You don't want to walk past the last one though, because uh, the, uh, the reef itself is, is kind of a flat top with water uh, in the low spots, but it drops off to uh, uh, maybe a couple hundred fathoms when you get uh, off uh, outside the perimeter. <laughs> so I think one of the one of the real questions that was asked is what happens uh, to the highest island if it goes underwater for part of a twenty four hour period? If it's not always above land, does it still qualify as a counter? Uh, is that written somewhere? I'm, that was the question that one of the. Um, oh, I, I, I'm. I have. Well, let's ask the, everybody else. Is that Bart? Is that written someplace in the in the uh, definition? Not that I saw. Yeah, it, it, it's it's kind of. Well, I, I doubt it's unique, but but it, it may be. It may be. Um, that's prob probably probably uh, something to talk about uh, after hours at Visalia and maybe uh, and maybe. Um, some other opportunities, but uh, I don't think that's a serious issue for, for uh, I mean, you know, given, given a, a, a satisfactory political solution to going out there, um, I don't think there's uh, any, any other reason to uh, take it off the list. Well, that's not a reason to take it off the list, but uh, it, it's, it can still be put on the air is what I was gonna say. 
I don't think there's anything to stop you. Go ahead, Al. Well, I agree. It is, uh, it's currently not, that's sort of a what if question. Uh, it currently is above water all the time. So it really is kind of a what if sort of a situation and that can be dealt later if the situation changes. Yeah. And, and just sort of as the timestamp, we're halfway through here, guys. So um, I don't know how many, you know, how many what ifs uh, okay. in those kind of examples, uh, you know, we, you want to run through. Let's, let's move on to uh, the second thing that I put on this list, and that's remote control operation, both in DXing and contesting. There's some legal issues, and, and uh, I'm sure the league has some other uh, issues as well. You want to speak to that first, uh, Bart? Sure. So in the contesting realm, we've got FCC issues uh, to begin with. So the operators who are operating a remote station in a contest must be U.S. licensed if, if again, it depends on the scenario. Uh, an example would be uh, a foreign participant using a U.S. remote joining a U.S. team. The foreign participant legally can't do that. Um, from a U.S. standpoint, uh, while remote operation, you know, uh, a participant can be uh, a participant in a remote station, um, we need to keep in mind again uh, just what what circumstances that particular team is looking for. For example, uh, you know, is that remote operator if they're in the club competition, is he one of club members, and uh, is he on their is he on their um, eligibility list, and um, so. So, you know, there are teams who have remote operators. And in fact, last year is a perfect example. And, and, and this year as well with COVID of where uh, remote operators were, were, were logging into uh, a particular contest station. Now, um, what was the other part? The other part uh, we, we talked about this morning, um, Wayne, it was, um, uh, I, think, I think, well, that's the contest side. You know, the DXCC side is a different matter. And again, DXCC is defined by entity. So under the current criteria, uh, the, uh, you know, a, a person who's using that station um, is using it uh, within the entity. Uh, if he's using it outside of the entity, then that's, that's not the way it, uh, it's, it's permitted. Now, could you activate your own station? I suppose you could. You know, if you're traveling and, you know, something rare is on and you have your station set up as remote and you're a business person, um, you know, you could use your own station remote to contact, uh, uh, um, you know, some other rare or, or, or non-rare station. But, uh, but again, you know, sort of the question of uh, that's been is, uh, you know, can you use a remote station on the West Coast to have an advantage to work, uh, you know, Asian opportunities in a remote station on the East Coast? Uh, the answer is yes. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this, I think this is the single issue, maybe the single issue that's uh, prompting a lot of discussion about remote control is not only in contesting, but um, well, it, it's and but in DN DXCC, so contesting is a little different because uh, if if I want to um, if I want to participate in a 160 contest that from the west, I'm in the west coast, but the transmitter's on the east coast, that's fine. It really doesn't matter where it is. I my uh, results may depend may be competing and should be competing with someone in that area, but where I am is irrelevant. And Here. and to, to your point. Um, um, To, if you if you're operating a, a USA licensed or a, a, a US licensed radio, amateur radio station, the operator can be anywhere. Basically, we, we that's one of the things we discuss. The operator can be in a foreign country or on the moon, but needs to be a US licensee. He needs to be a US licensee. Absolutely. absolutely. Well, I think the controversy is really um, making East Coast contacts um, for DXCC credit maybe right. on 160 meters in particular when your station license is on the west coast uh, for those that are purists they don't want to use a remote operation because i think it makes things too easy um, the rules state very clearly that you can do that if you're within the same dxcc entity but if you're moving a long distance via remote from your uh, call sign location you do get an advantage on certain bands and, and bart, some, people like it, some people don't and bart has an announcement so the, the ARO Programs and Services Committee has been discussing this subject for uh, several meetings 
And the result of that, which is in final development, is an actual endorsement sticker that will be made available to DXCC members where if they made all of their DXCC contacts for a given award, uh, DXCC award, from a fixed location that they can actually obtain that sticker and add that endorsement to uh, you know, whichever DXCC um, awards they've earned or to a plaque, they can buy as many of the stickers they would like. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a demonstration, it's a self-achievement issue. Um, so uh, you'll, you'll hear and see more about that. So what you're saying though, is that I could uh, build a station in Maine or something like that and uh, get to a very high level on 160 maybe, no matter where I happen to be, but it could only be that one location. If you had earned the award from that location, yeah, right, yes, right. then you could add the endorsement to that location. Again, we're not asking specifically for, uh, you know, give us a list, give us a breakdown. You're going to self-stipulate, self-certify uh, that the you made the accomplishment. And it's simply going to be an application that said, I've contacted 100 countries um, uh, from a fixed location and... They might, you know, they might hold multiple DXCCs or multiple DXCC categories, and uh, and if they do, they can request as many stickers as they want and put them on and take images and post them on Google and do or their web pages and do whatever they'd like. But it's uh, it's for those who feel that uh, in and of itself they they achieved or perhaps felt they achieved more by doing it uh, not from multiple locations. I mean, you know, some people. Uh, move from, oh, I don't know, Connecticut to Wyoming to Montana, you know, they're all over the map and, and uh, they might have achieved and reachieved uh, depending on circumstances and changes in call sign, uh, various DXCCs, you know, uh, the, the East Coast DXCC might have been uh, the 160 DXCC, you know, so uh, obtaining a sticker to, uh, to uh, provide that self satisfaction um, is, is the plan. Okay, there's a. This is only one component of the issue. I mean, you know, I was operating uh, South Sandwich in 2018 and on uh, 160, <laughs> and I was working Russians, and they're all, you know, S2, S3, and then all of a sudden you work one that's 40 over nine, and you know he's operating remote in South Africa, but he's signing his home call. Now I know this, I could not log him, but that would be uh, too harsh. So I log him and move on. And note to self, when I see that guy in the bar, I'm going to talk to him, uh, uh, you know, directly, uh, you know, but that happens a lot. Okay. Where, where, you know, what you're talking about is an issue unique to the United States where, you know, people operate from either coast, but I think there's a lot of other stuff going on yeah. that result to people putting signals on the air and not signing correctly. The inverse of what you're talking about, Ned, has also happened. In fact, I think it was your expedition, and I heard uh, a fellow in Salt Lake City calling and calling and calling and calling. Um, and it, it turns out, I think, that he has uh, a big station, uh, which was irrelevant in this case, but he has a receiver online in uh, South America someplace. Yeah, well, you can't know where somebody's listening, but that's right. But, but, but that's but a I problem. Can see this I can judge you know, uh, propagation enough to know that that's not, you know, the guy didn't put up an eight element 160 antenna you know, there, there overnight. Um, but but you, there's nothing you can do about it except, you know, apply social pressure to make yeah, sure that yeah. you, 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 you abuse this sort of thing um, uh, are advised not to do that because that, it really cheapens the whole game. I mean, the whole idea here is it's a personal thing. That's you know, an, the is a personal achievement. That's, that's an, an issue that that's a solution actually that I propose a lot is personal pressure. On the other hand, uh, I, there's, a, there's a big station in Nevada, W7RN, I think it's still there. Uh, and um, uh, I heard um, a young uh, a lady from uh, Florida operating uh, that station, uh, signing um, one morning working uh, Asia signing uh, W1YL portable seven. And I sent her an email and I said, that's real for uh, FOC <laughs> or, or what did I want to say? Uh, just first class operating. Absolutely. And she appreciated that. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the opposite. Yeah. Carrot and stick thing, I guess. Naturally. Sure. And of course that's Ellen White, W1YL. 
who's uh, in Florida and, and uh, operating out of an apartment, remote control. So there's another uh, consideration with remote control, but she's still active. So. Wayne, did we cover the five band DXCC award relative to what bands qualify? I, I think we, I, that was what, the, what I was gonna mention next. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, <clears throat> there, um, there have been proposals um, to allow now with, with more bands, there have been a proposal to allow any five bands uh, to qualify for the five band DXCC award. Uh, my comment on that is that I, I'm pretty sure the reason for having a five band award in the first place was to stimulate activity on the low bands. So you needed to operate 80 and, and 40 or 160 and well, I guess it's actually, I don't know what it is exactly, but, uh, but, but um, maybe, maybe we should have a, a seven band DXCC award where you had to work um, uh, at least um, 80 and 80 and or 160 and then the rest on, on the higher bands because because the uh, the work bands and the activity we have on them now has made five band DXCC trivial. Bart's shaking his head. But. Um, I, well, I was just going to comment because yeah. you, I had an email exchange on this this morning and the uh -huh. uh, the the additional fodder here is that the award uh, was also based on exploring the individual band characteristics. The idea was to learn uh, in, in part by, by achieving this award, what each band uh, time of day, et cetera, was capable of. So they created an experience to explore propagation. Uh, you know, they represented, each band represented its own individual challenges. Uh, and then finally, um, this did come up uh, a couple of years ago, uh, the, the Programs and Services Committee did review it. At that time, they decided not to take any action. Um, so it wasn't to say it's a bad idea. It wasn't to say, you know, we'll study it some more. At that point, they just simply had no basis to proceed further on the, uh, uh, the concept here. Again, that uh, the, the award was created in a, in, under certain um, um, expectations and those again uh, the, the the individual exploring the individual band characteristics was the basis in that of, of time okay. or of that time okay any other comments on that one okay i'll have a uh, this this could be a quick question i hope uh after kosovo uh, uh one person one person asks what constitutes a dxcc entity uh, and, and that leads to, is there a better definition of a 0.1 entity than we have? Does any, any thoughts come to mind on that for where we are right now? Ned? Yeah. Oh, no. I, Your box came on. <laughs> I, I, we've just debated this topic forever. And uh, you yeah, know, yeah. Talk yeah. About, you know, using whoever has the international treaties with other countries or the telephone or communication. Capability. You know, we've, we've talked about every single aspect of it, and there's no, no easy measure. Um, no, and, and one, one of the items that I had discussed this, uh, I remember a long conversation with Rick Roderick uh, uh, walking around my septic tank field. <laughs> and and, uh, <clears throat> and uh, we, we, he said, he said uh, I, I brought up sovereignty, the issue of sovereignty. He says, I like sovereignty. But what is sovereignty? I did some extensive research on that, and it's pretty vague. There's some treaties and some some definitions that float around over the centuries, actually. But uh, are, are we are we generally happy with what we have now for point one uh, status? We don't. I don't hear anything from the audience either. <laughs> well, the, the, the concern is that you 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 make a change and that's the old unintended consequence yeah. routine happens and that you didn't expect somebody to interpret what you said like this and then the whole bottom falls out of what you're doing and does, you really don't want to do that. Does the um, does the league have an office of unintended consequences? <laughs> There's a file. Uh, <laughs> It depends on the day. I mean, I, I think you can walk past a door and if you walk past it three hours later, there might have been some unintended consequences earlier in the day. I, you know, we, you hope you do, you hope you've, you've evaluated things and given them time to be fully evaluated rather than making short 
you know, uh, uh, quick decisions. Uh, and that, again, that's why the committees exist. And, and right. I think one of the things you may or may not jump into, and I'll, I'll, I'll just comment on it quickly, uh, Wayne, is the, um, there's been some evolutions in both the DXAC and the CAC in regard to both the, uh, they're a, a little bit of how they operate, but more so just, uh, you know, uh, the uh, processes. Uh, the PSC has, has had some adjustments in their um, um, standing order uh, under, uh, requirements as well. So I think, uh, again, communicating with the DXAC, uh, if you if you've got questions about given uh, DXCC or 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 issues uh, along the DXCC uh, realm, uh, you know, do reach out to the DXAC rep in your area or your division director, who will uh, interact. I'm sure with the uh, DXAC rep. Uh, you know, run things through channels. You know, make sure we get enough of the the people, the knowledgeable, uh, uh, if you will, experts engaged in the process so that the, the appropriate result um, um, occurs uh, after evaluation. John, do we have questions? Any questions? Uh, the audience? A couple, several. Um, I see some names. Yeah. You know, any uh, discussion about a seven band award? And then related to that, so an anonymous attendee asked, I think five band DXCC needs to change to any five bands instead of just 10, 15, 20, 40, and 80. Any and thoughts? That's, that's what we just discussed. And, and I, I would prefer uh, with, with the additional bands, as I said earlier, uh, that kind of renders five band trivial because you can do it all on, on uh, high frequencies if you're talking about achievement. Uh, but as I said, I, I believe that the original idea was to stimulate some activity on 80 and, and maybe 40 or 80 and 160, whatever. And, and uh, that, uh, that takes some extra, extra work. So, so in that particular case, I would suggest going to seven band award and, and uh, still uh, making it any seven bands. Well, and, and again, just to sort of uh, continue that thought, uh, Wayne, um, is uh, if you make it any seven bands, then the challenge of 80 and 40 meter DXC, uh, 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 the 80 and 40 meter band component is taken out of the picture. Uh, and as we get closer to the sunspot peak, um, the ease of getting, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the award might be you know, might be questionable. I know you meant any seven bands. I suppose, you know, somebody could say, uh, you know, I've got a good six meter and two meter EME station. So I'm going to use the six meters and two meters. And then, uh, you know, that comes into play as well. And I have friends who, uh, who have achieved DXCC uh, up through up through two meters. And of course, Ned and I know others who've taken it up to 432. So um, yeah. I mean, the XCC has been achieved uh, over a very broad spectrum. But right now, quick. with five band, uh, they're, they're 80, 40, 20, 15, and 10. Isn't that correct? Yeah. So, so mm -hmm. we, we could make some changes. We, we made some changes, or, we, or the FCC made some changes in terms of the bands we have. Uh, it seems like five band DXCC could, could be uh, reconfigured a little bit. To, uh, to retain the same uh, spread that we had to start with and accomplish something like that, being familiar with a, a broader range of bands than just uh, 40 through 10. Mm -hmm. Bob, John? Here's an interesting question from Chris Tate, that's Six Whiskey Mike. Has there been any discussion about pay to play remote stations? I think this is where most of the discontent is. He says, I am one of the biggest promoters of building remote stations, but pay stations are generating a lot of questions. I'm just interested to hear. <laughs> Silence. Oh, well, yeah. having built two remote stations myself, um, I mean, that's almost a whole new hobby for me is working through all the logistics of, of creating something of significance that that is uh, gives me an advantage in contesting and DXing without breaking rules. Um, and but I can understand people who don't have. I mean, it's a huge skill set required to do that. You know, you need networking knowledge. You need radios and antennas and you know social engineering. You got you know you got a team building and 
all this kind of stuff. And, and, and it's another approach, just pull out your visa card and get someone else, but it's, it's a, it's a legitimate approach. I mean, there's just the well, way we're, talk, can, we're talking know. about, we're talking about uh, subscriptions. Yeah. yeah you, so you, you, somebody else built the station. And yeah, there's right. also the other side of the coin. And the other side of the coin is for those individuals who can no longer have their own station. Right. right. How do you dictate what they should be limited to? Tell right. them they're, they're out of luck or can they take advantage of either free or stations that they can subscribe to? Well, I'm thinking that ham, you know, it's getting harder and harder to get, you know, the kid down the street to get in ham radio because you can't put up an antenna, but you can get them to operate a station remotely. So I think you know, you want to enable, uh, you know, use of community stations uh, to keep this hobby viable. I, in my opinion, I don't think you really want to regulate it out of anything. And, and I'm, I'm not suggesting that clubs uh, necessarily are a solution, uh, but one of the things clubs may or may not think about is as their club members become more challenged in having access to their own stations, right. you know, do, can the clubs empower their members through a club remote station and, and st start offering something uh, along those lines? Yeah, I've, I've been a big fan. I mean, I used to write articles or columns for NCJ and I've been pushing that is to, you know, turn your station into a gateway for those who don't have the capability, uh, since you're not using it all the time, it's uh, easy to do and it, it will help the hobby. Mark Griffin says, there's a lot of young hams getting on the air via remote operations. They don't have an advanced station in their home. We should be trying to promote advanced ways for younger hams to get on and develop their talents. That's great. Just exactly related to what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I have a question, Bart. I know the answer already, oh. but uh, a lot of people play uh, DX on uh, on 60 meters. Um, and I know AWR doesn't offer an award because of some agreement with uh, with government agencies not to promote activity on there, but, but people are gonna get on the air and they're gonna chase a hundred countries. Um, is there a future where at least log of the world might throw up a tally of how many countries that you're pulling out your pencil and paper and figuring out how, what your tally is on log of the world. Uh, no. <laughs> Again, it, uh, we're, we are uh, privileged to have access to the band. We recognize that logbook allows participants to upload QSOs and to do QSO matching. Uh, anything beyond that encourages uh, uh, competition and and it's a crossroads between how much do we want to encourage use of the band? Again, our, you know, one of the premise is to explore propagation and characteristics and all that. But at the same token, we're sharing this with, uh, with uh, a, um, some of our partner agencies. And so we always have to be careful and cautious of uh, our, our status on, on 60 meters. And so, you know, you, it, I'm not saying that uh, a person can't uh, download their information to a third party software and, and evaluate it in any other fashion they want. But for ARL right now, and in fact, what maybe I should even say uh, in even the current uh, iteration of a logbook, uh, having such an evaluation isn't available. Even if, if we wanted to do it right now, uh, I think there's probably uh, at least one person who sit in, sat in on our committee meetings who understands that uh, it, the evolving logbook into that tool set uh, would take a little bit. Do we, do, Bart, do, we, do we see expanding the use of logbook uh, to other uh, national organizations and, and similar like, uh, like G uh, in Japan, for example? We yes. were going to do that yeah, 16 can, years ago. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I continue to hear that. So the answer is yes, but I, I think it, it's, it's a little bit of, it's a, it's a two-headed challenge. The first challenge is uh, what can be accomplished within the current uh, system structure of logbook and then what the future logbook, which is, you know, if I had to pick a number, I guess it's probably at a, at a two-year uh, sitting uh, uh, two-year um, uh, calendar anyway, 
um, before it would be capable of some of these additional uh, country awards, you know, basically like an inventory management system. There's a lot of a lot of comments here about RIDI DXCC. Is that not? I'm seeing comments saying, "Why don't we reinstate it again?" Yeah. Does that yeah, does... The, the issue? The issue being RIDI as distinct from uh, uh, as not being lumped into the digital mode because there's so many digital modes now that uh, that RIDI has sort of taken a back seat. So if I may, uh, the evolution of digital communications, um, and again, mine is a shorter view of this because I wasn't uh, directly involved in these things uh, uh, until more recently, is that, uh, you know, ready was king. Um, and so, uh, you know, uh, the, the bulk of all digital contacts was ready uh, at a point, uh, digital, the other digital modes started to get traction and it was to either then consider, and, and, and I don't know, Wayne, I think you might've been sort of at the start of this before you left, but uh, knowing some of the, the background, but um, you had to decide then, uh, how do you want to handle as these different digital modes come along, you know, how do you decide what role they play in a DXCC? whether it's a standalone DXCC or part of a larger one. The decision at that time was, let's make it a digital DXCC and then all digital modes, including RIDI, would be a part of it. Uh, so, you know, taking that, you know, going forward with that next step, the next step would be if somebody's looking for endorsements which don't exist today, again, uh, you could make proposals through uh, DXAC and or your director, uh, but at the present time, there's phone, there's CW, and there's digital and mixed. Two or three people have asked about a 60, 60 meter DXCC. Any, any, any discussion about that? They're a feeling that is becoming much more common across the globe. Well, since we just touched on 60 meters and why ARL isn't going to have an award program around it, <laughs> uh, the same is true. Um, on, on, you know, until the, the fact that it's five channels, until the uh, the the ac worldwide access, uh, for example, which is I, I believe still not currently the case. I'd have to look at the, the current tables, but I believe it's not currently a worldwide access. We're secondary. Uh, we need to recognize that these channels are still being shared with uh, partner gov uh, government agencies. It's just not in the short term picture. Well, we're about out of time. We are. We're at that point. Any final comments from uh, you, Wayne? Wrap it up. Well, uh, we've covered a lot of stuff, and and uh, I guess the best we could say is a starting point to continue discussions in Visalia next year after midnight. <laughs> in the bar, in the bar. Let me. Uh... Ready. Yeah, the, the, the one downside of, of, of doing this convention virtually is that we don't have the happy hour. You don't have the happy hour. That's right. Absolutely. Well, I suppose you'd reconvene this at 12.01. We, we can have, we two can have years, a happy hour. We can have your own private happy hours. That's two right. Years ago, two years ago, I spent quite a few minutes and hours out in the lobby uh, before going to bed, and uh, I, I missed breakfast. <laughs> I, I, got to bed, I got to bed at 5 a.m. Yeah. And I, I enjoy that thoroughly. Yeah. And yes, there, there are photos of you floating around about those times. I've seen them. <laughs> I'm Listen, be surprised. we Thank need a uh, round of applause for the DX Forum uh, panelists. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, there's a lot more comments uh, under, on the chat and Q&A. When I get those printed out, I'll send them to you because we don't have time to cover all of it. But there's been a lot of background discussion going on and a lot of compliments. Well, that's, uh, it's so. good to see the discussion. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. Well, thank we're, you. Yeah, thank you. We're going to, okay. uh, you, yes, well, we're going to, um, we're done. Control. We're done. Uh, so uh, thank you for the panelists. And uh, just before,